Hi, I'm Pastor Dawn. Welcome to worship with the community of South Cayuga Community Church for the week of Sunday, January 16, 2022. At this time, let us acknowledge that we are worshiping on the ancestral land of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe people. We live, work, play, and pray on the lands of the Haldeman Tract. May we live in harmony and respect with all those who share the earth with us, and be thankful to God as we move into a peaceful and healthy future together. There are a few announcements I'd like to draw to your attention. I'm going to try my best not to take as long as I did last week. Um, but there are some pretty exciting things happening right now. For starters, Star Words have all been mailed out. Um, over 80 have gone out, but I still have my basket uh, with lots of stars in it. So if you didn't get one in the mail, if you're not on our regular mailing list, or I didn't hear from you on Facebook uh, or email or text message, send me a message and I will choose one for you. And also uh, send us an email at the church and we'll get you on our email list. Lots of interesting things go out by email. Also, all the details about our walk to Calvary are uh, included in, in the email, uh, Journey to the Cross Challenge. So uh, it started just on Wednesday and your challenge is to walk to Calvary over the next 13 weeks. It's not that far. It's only 144 kilometers or 32 hours of walking. I'm sure you can do that. And if not, if it's too cold, if it's too miserable, uh, if, if uh, physically you're just not able to do that much walking, we also want you to count your time praying for our congregation. That is uh, counted as part of the journey to the cross. And so what we're asking you to do is keep track of your mileage and your prayer time and send it into the office and we are going to have a map that shows our progress, how far uh, we have made it collectively um, from Nazareth to Jerusalem or Calvary, but collectively as a whole group, we're gonna see how far we can make it um, from Canada to Calvary, which is 9,581 kilometers or 2000, 2100 basically, 2100 hours. So I think we can do it as a group. Uh, in a few weeks, we'll see where we're at. We may have to ask Grace and Dunville or uh, some other church to uh, join us on our journey so that we can make it together. But uh, get out there walking, get praying. Uh, let's see how we can do together as a group. Also wanted to let you know that we are going to resume Bible study on Zoom on Wednesday. This time we're going to start at 9 o'clock. There will be a social time from 9 to 9.30, so bring your coffee, bring your breakfast. Uh, you don't even have to change. You can wear your pajamas. No one minds. And uh, then we'll start the study at 9.30. Uh, if you don't have the Zoom link, send me an email. I'll make sure you get it. And uh, hopefully next week, I will also be able to tell you when we're gonna have coffee hour on Zoom, in addition to that one Wednesday morning from 9, 30, 9 to 9.30 before the Bible study. Um, we're hoping to have just a regular old coffee hour with no agenda. Um, and hopefully we'll have that set up for you the following week. So I'll let you know next Sunday. And uh, we'll also let you know by email. So again, get your email address on our mailing list. One more announcement I think that I should draw to your attention is that if you're responsible for an annual report, uh, please get that into the office by the end of January so that we can get those um, booklets printed and, and delivered to everyone who wants one. I, uh, I normally would end things in person with who's got a birthday or a joy or celebration um, to share with us. And since you're not here and you're watching me online, uh, we 
can't really interact, but uh, a very happy birthday, a very happy anniversary to those of you who are celebrating this week. And uh, hopefully we'll be back together soon. Our committee will meet the end of this month and uh, talk about next steps uh, and what uh, is safest for us to do together. We light this candle remembering that the light of Christ is always present. It is always there inviting us to notice. in the beauty of holiness. God's voice is over the waters. God's glory thundering across the great waters. God's voice is power. God's voice is full of majesty. God's voice shatters the cedars splinters the cedars of Lebanon. God's voice makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Mount Hernan stampede like a wild young bull. God's voice forks with, into tongues of fire. God's voice shakes the wilderness, sets trembling the wilderness of Kadesh. God's voice causes the oaks to whirl, stripping the forest bare. And in the temple all cry, glory. glory! Glory, glory, to our God. God sits enthroned above the waters. God is enthroned as sovereign forever. You give strength to your people, O God. Now give to your people the blessing of peace. Let us pray. Holy and sustaining God, we come to worship and praise you. We journeyed with you to Bethlehem and followed the star of the east. Today we gather with you at the River Jordan, remembering Jesus' baptism. As we enter this season of epiphanies and revelations, may your spirit stir our hearts and open our lives to new learnings and understandings. Fill us with a willingness to go into the deep waters, ever mindful that you have called us by name and that you go with us. We pray through Jesus, our baptized Savior. Amen. Our opening hymn is found in Voices United, Number 644, I was there to hear your warning cry. Thank you. 
Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 22. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering if their hearts, if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When all the people were baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice from heaven came, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. There is wisdom in these words and love in our hearts. The next hymn is found in Voices United, number 100, When Jesus Comes to be Baptized. Let us pray. Creator Spirit, moving over the waters, you are the God of our baptism. Delivering God, you save us from flood and destruction. Holy Spirit, hover over us. Stir up in us the words of God. May we notice your voice coming to us as it came to Jesus, calling us your beloved. So Dan asked me near the end of last week, how long do people say Happy New Year for? He explained that the cashier at our local Avondale had said Happy New Year as he left the store and he thought it was a little bit funny. I went in for milk yesterday and sure enough, as I was leaving, the clerk joyfully said Happy New Year and I smiled and wondered to myself, what is the appropriate length of time to continue with that saying? Honestly, it's a very kind phrase. A happy year is far better than what we've had the past two years, which I'm sure not too many would describe as happy. Frustrating, yes, 
disappointing for sure. Sad, bad, difficult. To quote the Grinch, these past two years have stink, stank, stunk. At the same time, I feel a little bit like the past two years have led me to feel a little bit numb. Maybe a better word to strive for this year than happy is actually the word alive. This year, I want to feel alive again. Two years ago, on January 1st, 2020, Dan drove Brady and I to Port Dover to the annual polar bear swim. Dan, of course, held the towels while Brady and I stripped down to our bathing suits and ran into the frigid waters of Lake Erie. It was unbelievably cold. It was shocking. It was a little bit painful, but it was exhilarating. Though the big polar bear swims were canceled this year again, one could still do a personal polar bear dip. I know many of you have waterfront properties who would be willing to let your crazy minister run into the water, but I think I'm going to pass this year. Though the cold dip is usually a great a group event, it is essentially, though, a personal thing without any actual rules. For example, you're allowed to turn around, to change your mind. If, you, if your feet hit that awful liquid and you can't stand it, if it's just too cold, too much, you can turn around and head back to your towels and warm clothes. Also, there's no rules about speed. You're allowed to sprint with everything you've got or Mosley, mosey along like a Sunday drive and take your time. The pain of the rocks on your bare feet might slow you down. It's the risk of living. Our lives are not smooth sailing. There are always things to stub our toes on and to knock us off balance. But as we talked about last week with those roadblocks and those things that we stub our toes on, sometimes that's God guiding us in a different direction. If we continue on with this polar bear dip metaphor, there are certain body parts that are harder to get wet than others. And it's your choice whether you run in and run out without ever getting your head wet, or whether you take a deep breath, plug your nose and dive right under. Similarly, we have the same choice in our relationship with God. Some folks, and sometimes, we give God everything we've got. Whereas sometimes there are certain parts of ourselves that we hold back from God. Things that make us feel too vulnerable, and we try to hide them away, bury them. But there's something so incredibly freeing, scary though it may be, to just dive all in and hand everything over to God. I don't know if you've ever heard this before or you know this from experience, but competitive swimmers shave all of their body hair before racing. It's not just to cut down on friction in the water. Shaving actually removes the layer of dead cells that protects the dermis layer of their skin exposing this layer of their skin to the cold water makes them fully alert and ensures that their entire body is in tune with what is happening. I think that's what we all need right now. We don't necessarily need a big shock like the polar bear swim. I don't really think my body's up for that right now. The other day Dan was leaving for ice fishing with his buddies and they were leaving at 2.30 in the morning. He came into the bedroom at 2.30 in the morning to say goodbye, and he said that my entire body tensed up and leapt over away from him on the bed. We don't need that kind of shockingly intense wake-up call, but we do need a reminder that we're alive, a renewed sense of aliveness. Brooke Hampton said, no, we don't need more sleep. 
It's our souls that are tired, not our bodies. We need nature, we need magic, we need adventure, we need freedom, we need truth, we need stillness. We don't need more sleep. We need to wake up and live. The COVID pandemic has forced us to slow down. We've had more time for resting and sleepy, sleeping than likely we've ever had before because we just haven't been able to get out and do the things we normally would do. But we run the risk of becoming unreactive, immobile, dormant, indifferent. We need to be awakened, not in the middle of the night from a dead sleep, but we need the opposite of sleep. We need nature, we need magic, we need adventure, we need freedom, we need truth. We need to feel alive. We need Jesus. When Jesus went down to the river and cousin John baptized him in the Jordan, it probably wasn't as shockingly cold as Lake Erie would be right now, but the heavens opening and hearing God saying, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased, was likely equally as shocking. I'm not suggesting you go run in the lake, but I am suggesting that you splash some cold water on your face and remember your own baptism. Splash cold water on your face at the sink and then look yourself in the eye, in the mirror, and remind yourself that you are God's beloved child. You are loved. You are forgiven. You are never alone. Perhaps that's not enough. Not yet enough. Perhaps you need to kick off those comfortable house shoes or slippers, peel off those fuzzy warm socks, and step those bare little toes directly on the cold frozen ground outside. Or maybe the next time you're in the shower, before you get out, turn the dial all the way down to cold. It's actually scientifically proven to be good for your health. Do something you don't do every day. The pandemic has slowed our lives down in many ways and lulled us to sleep. But the daily roadblocks that we talked about last week, they're still coming. They're still there. The messages and lessons from God are still here. God isn't sleeping and God hasn't stopped communicating with us. But if we don't take the steps to wake ourselves up, we're going to miss something. So go do something out of the ordinary. Remind yourself that you are alive. You can do it. You can do hard things. You are ready. You are God's beloved child whom God is well pleased with. You are chosen. The prophet Isaiah reminds us in chapter 43, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be there. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your steed. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. We don't need more sleep. We need a reminder that we are alive. We need to feel the feels and embrace what's hard. 
We need to trust that we can do it because we are never alone. We need to let go of our fears, let go of whatever is holding us back and take a step. God is with us. In just over 300 days, when we turn and look back at 2022, may this be the year that you describe as the year you connected with nature. You witnessed magic. You went on adventures. And you felt more alive than you have in years. May it be so. Loving and gracious God, we come before you ready to listen. We are awake and we are renewed in our longing for your guidance. Guide us to see the places where you call us to reflect your light. Today, we especially pray for the doctors, nurses, and care staff in hospitals and long-term care homes. We pray for the researchers and policymakers, teachers, school staff, and students, as well as parents and grandparents. Holy God, this pandemic time is confusing and frustrating, and there are so many differing opinions on what should and shouldn't be happening. May your peace flow around us, calming us all and strengthening those who are weary. We pray for those in our families and community who are enduring tests, undergoing treatments, palliative, and grieving. We ask that you would comfort them and reassure them that you are there in their fear, in their confusion, in their sorrow. They are never alone. Holy God, we pray for the people around the world who are without safe places to live or food to feed their families those wanting to come to Canada and other countries of promise. Give them courage, we ask, and keep them hopeful. In our hearts, Almighty, we hold many prayers for people and places dear to us, and in this moment of silence, we offer them to you. In your way and in your timing, we ask that our prayers might be answered. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our last hymn is found in Voices United, number 716, My Life Flows On. Come on. 
as the water washed over Jesus, so may the words of our worship continue to wash over you as you go from this time. As Jesus emerged from the river refreshed in his ministry, may you emerge from this time of worship refreshed in yours and ready to serve. Go now in peace. Thank you. 